This is a complete matchmaker and lobby system that I developed in one day. Let's take a look at the high level process and architecture that I used to build it. When a player loads the game, they can click on find matches, which will query the WebSocket server for a list of available games they can join. Once they've made their selection, it'll bring them into the lobby for that game, along with the other players that are also waiting for the match to start. Once the match has reached the minimal amount of players, the client will connect to the actual Godot server, which will tell the clients to move to the game start state and load the first level. Let's take a quick look at the tech stack. We have a AWS ecosystem with API Gateway and Lambda to manage our WebSocket connection to the Godot clients. And we saw how to set that up in the last couple of videos. And then Lambda uses DynamoDB to retrieve and store player and match data to forward that data back to the clients. So I like to use AWS because I have a few years of experience with it and also because they're basically a leader in the cloud hosting service provider space. So they have a lot of support for game tech. Like you can see here that they specialize in MySQL Postgres servers, as well as MongoDB and DynamoDB, which are your NoSQL databases, caching, whatever, you name it, they have support for it. So whether you're a beginner and you're just starting out or you're just a big game studio that's looking to expand worldwide, you can really do that with the systems they offer here. So with my tutorials, I'm gonna try to ease you guys into how to use these services. So it's a really powerful tool and they do have a really generous free tier for most of their products. So you can kind of get started for free and get a feel for it. And then as you grow, as your game grows, you'll hopefully be able to support those costs, but ultimately I use a lot of technologies that are very low cost like Lambda and DynamoDB. And if you look here, you can see that there's actually case studies on Supercell, Gearbox, you know, Borderlands, Riot Games has some stuff on here, League of Legends people. There are articles and use case blogs written about design patterns that you may encounter with your game and they really tell you how to do it. They walk you through like, here's some of the ways you can model your game, uh, your backend technologies and your architectures. Most recently I discovered this leaderboard write up, which I thought was really interesting. So I'm going to be using these technologies pretty heavily for all my demos. And I encourage you to really get familiar with it and at least check it out and read up about it. And if you have any questions, drop by the discord and we can hash it out. Let's start with looking at what happens when a player clicks on the find matches button. Well, it establishes a WebSocket connection between the Godot client and the WebSocket server on the Lambda side. And it will send back the list of matches based on what preferences the user submitted for whatever match matches they wanted to join. And in this case, I'm just doing a everybody can join any match, but you could take this opportunity to program in, maybe the user wants to select a specific match type or maybe a team makeup like 3v3, 2v2, 1v1, etc. Or maybe there's some other game type preferences that you may want to include, capture the flag or free for all or death match or that sort of thing. So you would have that on this screen and they'd be able to select whichever, hit find matches, sends that uh, connection over the WebSocket, and then the server responds with the list of available matches that they can join. Once the server processes that request for available matches, it sends it back as a list over the WebSocket to the client, which we display here as buttons so that the client can click on whichever match they want to enter. And then once they click on it, it sends another request back to the WebSocket, and the WebSocket will take that match that they clicked on and we'll add that player to the match. Because we know that they wanna join this match, we were gonna move them into the lobby. But in order to do that, we need to capture their connection ID. So as part of adding that player to the match, we also store their WebSocket connection ID so we know how to send messages back to them in the future. So now that this player has been added to the match, we will move them to the lobby and we'll receive a new message from the server that gives us all the other players that are connected and waiting in the same lobby. Like you can see here, players will show up under team one and team two respectively. So if a new player joins, you'll get another message from the server to all the connected clients that a new player has joined, and then they will show up in real time in this lobby. And likewise, with the inverse, if they disconnect, you'll get another message that this person left, and then you'll still be waiting for that spot to be filled. And if you wanna take advantage of this lobby to maybe implement chatting, or maybe you wanna be able to click on another player and see their stats or their achievements, or maybe their gear or something, you can totally do that on the screen 
And since you have an active WebSocket connection, you can do it right when you click on it. So you can click on a player and immediately make a request and you'll get that response from the server and you can populate the views with whatever information and achievements and data that you wanna have. So each time a player joins, the client will send a message back to the WebSocket server to check if we have all the people or the minimum amount of players to start this game. Once we have hit that minimum amount, the WebSocket server will send a message back to the clients to go ahead and start the game. And that message will actually contain the connection info for the Godot server hosted wherever you have it hosted so that those clients can connect to it. And I say wherever it can be hosted because it literally can be hosted anywhere. You can use this Lambda API Gateway DynamoDB setup for your matchmaking and lobby, but you don't have to use AWS to host your server. You can host it on any platform you want as long as you can configure the Lambda function to be aware of whatever IP or port your server is gonna exist at. It'll work out fine and once the match is full, you send that start game message back to the clients. And then at that point, I call the connect to server functionality that I have in my game that you've seen in a couple videos before. And it will actually connect directly to this server. It'll kill the WebSocket. And now you have a connection to the IP and port of your Godot server so that you can begin playing the game as normal. So because the server has authority over these clients, it will say, okay, clients spawn the first level or spawn the map that we're about to play. And it'll automatically spawn and sync that first map and your players will be brought to that map like you can see here in this gameplay. And that's exactly what I did in that spawn and sync video a few weeks ago. So if you're curious how to do that, check it out. And if you've already done it, well then you're very familiar with this part in the process. So I plan on doing a whole series where I show you how to do each one of these individual sections. And it's probably gonna be over a few videos. So if you're excited to see that, please let me know in the comments. Maybe there's a specific section that you're really interested in. Also let me know, or also let me know if you have any uh, interesting matchmaking scenarios. I just did a really basic one today. So if there's something else or you have a different flavor of matchmaking that you're curious about and you wanna know more, uh, let me know and maybe I can cover that as well. Anyways, give this video a like if you enjoyed it and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the rest of the series. Thanks for watching.